Hello and welcome to Life Questions. I'm your host, Bill Harris. During these complex times, it seems that Christians are searching for answers about life. Who to marry? Should I get a divorce? Who should I vote for? Why did God allow my spouse to die? In general, one question sums it all up. How do you make sense out of life these days? It might surprise you to see that the types of questions we get here are quite startling sometimes, but we are very grateful to have those questions. And so we have assembled a panel of local ministers <coughs> to review your questions carefully and prayerfully and come up with some answers. I'd like to introduce you to them at this time. First, we have with us Pastor Kelly Waltz of the church at Allentown, followed by Pastor Bill Mackey of Zion Lutheran in St. Mary's. Third, we have Pastor Tim Smith of St. Mary's Church of the Nazarene, and rounding out our panel, Jeff Kimberly, who is pastor of the Neapolis Church of Christ. We are certainly happy, happy to have you all with us today. Glad Good to, to have Glad you to here. here. Thank you. You know, to begin, I'd like to start with one of the questions that came in from our viewers that I think that everybody in our audience can identify with. Uh, it says, that, can you offer some strong suggestions on how to battle worry and anxiety. I've tried counseling and medication. Neither is working for me. Sounds like a person that's quite desperate here. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you know, this, this person is a candidate for the love of God, wouldn't you say, by uh, virtue absolutely. of what they're describing? Um, uh, how would you answer that? Who would like to go first on that? My, uh, I, I have a friend, a female friend who is, um, very afraid of traveling. Uh, she has been for a long time. Great anxiety whenever she has to go more than an hour away from where she lives. And the anxiety stems is, is about what? The travel itself? The Just, safety? Of yes, it uh, about, about um, if something happens to the vehicle, if uh, there's a, a problem on, say, the expressway and then you can't get to an exit and you're trapped there and uh, all of this kind of thing. Um, and, um, and she has been praying constantly about this uh, uh, for years. And um, um, she had a dream uh, where uh, Jesus was uh, talking to her about, about going where he was wanting her to go and uh, that he would be with her always, uh, no matter where it was she mm -hmm. went. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and they were walking along as they were having this conversation and then she realized that Jesus wasn't next to her anymore and so she was she looked up and she was kind of anxious but it was because she had stopped and Jesus turned back around and looked at her and said are you coming and he held out <laughs> his hand uh -huh. um, she said she found that really comforting to her because she realized that uh, he was going to be everywhere she was going to go, where, where he was going to lead her. Mm -hmm. And if she just stayed with where he was leading her to go, she would be just fine. So she travels much easier now. She's okay. not as anxious now about that. And um, uh, so for her, it was continual prayer, yeah. continually asking the Lord to help her with this issue. And she's overcome a lot of it. Excellent. From what I understand, the experts tell us that, that, that fear is um, concerned with the present situation, with the present danger and the like. Anxiety tends to be fear of the future. And um, there are so many people on, the, on this planet mm -hmm. that have that fear of tomorrow. How do you tell them to confront that? Well, uh, anxiety and worry, as the old saying, it's uh, like a rocking chair. To, gives you something to do but doesn't really get you anywhere um, <laughs> and not to say that uh, worry and anxiety haven't beset me I, I've certainly been there but uh, one of the things that has helped me the most has simply been um, uh, meditation on God's promises and his word uh, so it should be really surprising that the first two answers to the question have to do with prayer and Bible reading, you know, mm -hmm. from, from some pastors. Right. Who would have But uh, uh, <clears throat> as, you, as you meditate on Scripture and read over God's promises, one of the things I'm reminded of is the fact that He's in control. And if He's in control, I can rest in mm -hmm. that. And that has helped me. 
And that, and that control he has, you have to give it to him, don't yes. you? Yeah. Because, I mean, ultimately you are in control because he, will, he doesn't have robots serving him. We serve him voluntarily. How do we give over the control to him and rest in his peace then? How do we do that? Well, that's, that is, it, it's a matter of surrendering to him and saying, not my will, but yours be done. It's Jesus' prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he knew exactly what he was facing. Um, and yet, and it was the worst possible. And yet he was able to surrender to God's will. We don't know what we're facing, but it's not going to be that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have been given the model for us of, giving our lives to him and, and letting him have control of that. You, see, you seem to be implying that our words and our thoughts have a lot to do with it too. Certainly. That's what I heard implied Certainly. in what you were saying. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think if you speak something, it, it, ha it takes on an existence um, and uh, uh, that can be that can that can hurt your situation if you're always talking about being afraid for example um, or it can help you if you're always reciting scripture verses in which the promise comes from god that you know uh, you can place all your worry upon him because you know he's uh, he's big enough to be able to handle it uh, uh, because he cares for you he he loves you and uh, and so if you can if you can verbalize that trust, if you can verbalize that you're, you're willing to surrender and trust what, what Jesus is going to do for you, you can begin to believe that. Faith comes from hearing, and of course... Um, hearing from the Word of God. Yeah, and, and, and so you begin to, to hear those scripture verses as you recite them out loud, and it becomes real through your, your mind, you know, as you hear it. Do you want to add anything to that? You know, <clears throat> I have a seven-year-old, and, and she, she's anxious about a lot of things. Um, and what I've, I've kind of told her is, you know, Kaylee, it's, it's okay to be anxious. It's okay, it's okay but you need, to, you need to pray. You need to pray and ask God to take it away. For, take mm -hmm. it away. Mm -hmm. You need to pray. When you get anxious, stop and pray. And, and she gets real anxious. It's like she doesn't know what to do. Like if she's in a situation she doesn't know what to do, and she doesn't understand it. She just gets anxious. She doesn't ask for help. She shuts down. And, and she's said, six years old? Seven. Seven years seven old? Seven years old. And I said, you've got to pray about it. You've got to pray about it. So she was real anxious about our move. She just, it was real hard for her to, mm -hmm. to get away from it. And I said, have you prayed about it? And now back up just a second because the folks who heard you talk about your move last, on our last program are not familiar. You've only been here for about two months. About two months, yeah. From... Some South Carolina. South Carolina. So it was about a 12 hour <clears throat> drive and she was real anxious about leaving her friends ah. and, and coming here. And I kept saying to her, you, have you prayed about it? No, I haven't prayed about it. And so yesterday was her very first day at her new school. She was anxious. Oh, oh. I said, have you prayed about it? So that was Sunday night. So on our way to school yesterday, she said, daddy, I'm not anxious anymore. Oh. I said, well, why is that? Oh. She goes, because Jesus and I talked and he's going to be here too. So it's, ah. it's that, it, you know, if, if we have like faith, faith like a child, we can accomplish anything, you know, and, and that even comes with worry and anxiety. If we have just enough faith like a child that we can overcome it, and we pray about it, we can, we can do it. We can step through that worry and anxiety. Well, what is, to say, what is there to be said about meditating and speaking the Word of God in, in cases like this? To me, I just feel like um, when I do that, spend time in God's Word, there's just a sense of peace that comes over me because it's like I release everything of what could be coming in due to the world and the busyness of being caught up and trying because I do often like to be in control and not unlike many people, I want to know what's coming next. But yet we don't always know what's coming next. Because you want to be in control, right? Because I want to be in control. <laughs> But then we come to understand that um, things that we do on our own may turn out okay, may not turn out okay. But if we go and put our faith and trust in God's plan, because we know God has one plan, He has one perfect plan. And with Him being in control, I mean, last week I went to the dentist. I do not like getting my teeth cleaned. 
and I'm gripping those arms and I'm like, how am I going to make it? So I just said, God, 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 calling out to him. And a sense of peace just came over me and I relaxed and I made it through no problem. Did you go see Dr. Yankum by chance? No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an idea that I think I can do something on my own, but it's, it's God that brings that, that comfort. Mm -hmm. I don't need mm. to know what exactly is going to come next because regardless of what comes next, I know what's coming in the future, way mm -hmm. in the future or who knows, maybe tomorrow. Is, is, is worry and is anxiety different for women or is that something society just puts on women? For me, I would say I tend to be uh, more of an emotional person. Mm -hmm. And so when so you've are got, men though, that's we true. don't admit it. That's true. <laughs> we don't admit it. <laughs> and I think um, we really are concerned and spend more time thinking and worrying. We do worry more. Mm. Um, Sometimes bringing up things in the mind that really don't exist and compounding the, the problem. Right. Perhaps. Yeah. Because we start thinking, okay, what if, what if, what if, and all these things come in. What if it plays out this way? What if it plays out that way? Mm -hmm. um, where the, you know, the caring, taking care of all the hurts, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, watching out over the children, making sure what if, what if, you know, as a classroom teacher in this day and age, as things come, you had to worry about, you know, an active shooter coming in. Yeah. And, and, and what if, and that concern, and bottom line, I'm going to do whatever God calls me to yeah. do. You know, I, I'm reminded of the story of Mary and Martha because Martha complained to Jesus that while her sister Mary was sitting down at Jesus' feet, you know, taking in every word he said, she was up trying to get things done because she wanted yes. things to be perfect. He wasn't helping her. And Jesus replied to Martha was, you are worried about many things. He, he didn't limit it to just that one right. incident. Right. He said, she You're was worried trying about to me. be in control. Yeah, in control and Whereas having it perfect. the other was spending time with Jesus, letting Jesus be in control. Yeah, yeah. And who was experiencing more peace? Speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's great, great, good conversation. Listen, we've got to take a break. Um, we're halfway through the program already. Uh, we're coming back with more good discussion and answering some of the questions that perhaps you sent us. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back. Thank you for staying with us. I'm going to read another question from one of you, the viewers out there. Uh, panel, what are the best ways I can be a missionary in the workplace? I'm not really in a position to, quote unquote, preach to my coworkers, but I still want to be a witness. So what are the opportunities for that? What are the ways of going about that? How, how should you conduct yourself? Go ahead, Pastor Mackey. Well, um, we don't have to preach with our words. We can go ahead and preach by the way we behave, the way we act uh, towards others. Um, and and uh, acting as a Christian, being a Christian, living out the, the Christian faith and ideals can speak volumes to people. We can become living stones without even opening our mouth. And I have a friend in uh, Florida um, who uh, goes down there for six months out of the year and, and he's made friends with uh, people that live in the same condominium complex as him. And, and um, after two years, this, gentleman said to him, you know, I've been watching you. Um, and my friend said, oh, really? And uh, the gentleman said, well, yeah, I'd like to know your secret to being so happy. <laughs> and my friend said, well, um, the reason I'm happy is because I know Jesus Christ. And the guy was kind of taken back a bit. 
Um, but he had noticed all these qualities and he had noticed that Terry was a happy man, mm -hmm. um, had a, an inner joy. And, uh, and so he wanted that himself. How do I get that? And, and in that process then, Terry didn't preach to him, but Terry told him the truth that he was um, a disciple of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ was his Lord and Savior, and that's what made him happy for each day. A living testimony. A living that. testimony yeah, without that. preaching. Yeah, interesting. Who else wants to add to that? You know, the, the Bible says they will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. And, and I think the way that we love each other can take on a various, many different forms, you know. Sure. Just being interested in our coworkers and what they're, what they, you know, being interested in your coworkers, being interested in what they're up to, you know, taking an interest goes a long way, you know. You don't have to preach at them. You don't have to, you know, you know, as I like to say it from the pulpit, thump them over the head with the Bible. <laughs> but you have to, you know, just taking an interest in them will go a long way to, oh, wow, nobody else cares about that. Why do you care so much about me? Why do you care so much about my family and what we're doing? And well, because, you know, we're called to love one another. You know, mm -hmm. God says to love one another. And that just opens a door, you know. Um, you never know just the little seeds that you're going to plant. Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before men. They may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. It's just these little seeds that you plant every day. You never know what, when they're going to ripen and when they're going to harvest, but you just got to keep planting them. We have to remember that God is the one that's going to bring about the harvest. We are just supposed to plant seeds. And just going that little bit extra for people. And if they say something and say, well, why are you helping me? And say, well, it's more of a blessing for me to serve you than what you're receiving. And it's... It's, you know, as simple as saying, I want to bring glory to my father. Yes. Yeah. And just making comments like that, Daring, yeah. or having a Bible that's visibly there in your workplace if you're able to do that. Just people witnessing and seeing that just makes suggestions in their mind as to who you are and what it is that you live your life by. Mm -hmm. yeah, even simple things like, you know, saying a prayer before you eat mm -hmm. at your workplace. I mean, that goes a long way. That's sure. a very nonverbal way that just to say, hey, I'm, I'm a little different. Yeah, right. You know, you don't, you don't have to stand <coughs> up and preach. So in essence, what we do speaks louder than what we say. Mm -hmm. right. Because lots of people say things and then you watch them and they don't live up to the things that they say. Right. Mm -hmm. We can all say things, but do we truly live our lives that way? I, I would just, uh, to piggyback on what each of us have said, is St. Francis of Assisi uh, is credited with being the first to say, uh, preach the gospel at all times, when necessary, use words. Right. <laughs> and I think that's right. exactly what we're getting at. I would put the shameless plug here, invite your friends, your coworkers to church. Um, I, I read a statistic recently that only 5% of Americans are hostile to church. And really? we, we, we have this image in our minds that people hate the church or don't want anything to do with it. But the statistics say that really only 5% are hostile to the church. And so far more people are open to an invitation to join you to come to worship. So that's my shameless plug. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> well, and some people are, are hesitant to even do simple things or share because they don't feel like they have the knowledge or the background. Mm -hmm. But if you know Jesus is your savior and when you die, you're going to heaven, right there's the, the message. And, and so regardless of if somebody witnesses you and you're facing struggles in the workplace and things aren't going quite right, you still have joy because you know this is all temporary mm -hmm. and you live your life like that. This seems to speak to the point that perhaps you need to have training classes and the like on how to be effective in the workplace, do you think? There are even books on this. I have a couple myself on, on how to be effective in the workplace, would you say? Well, I, you know, I, I think you can do that. I, I think another way as well is, is, you know, to essentially just be a good friend mm -hmm. to the people you work with. Uh, get to know them. Let them know you. Treat them with love and kindness. Um, the, the things that we're taught, you know, in Sunday school and all that with, uh, with our faith. 
um, about how to behave towards others, how to love your neighbor. I don't need a PhD to be able to be nice to folks. Um, Simple so. acts of kindness. Yeah. Simple acts of kindness that you can do. You know, you know. We we uh, in Toledo a couple weeks ago we had a, we had like a couple inches of snow fall, and uh, you know my parents had decided to gift me a snowblower, really? thinking I would never need it, but <laughs> have a snowblower. So I I had done my drive when I was sitting in the house watching TV and I heard our na the neighbor across the street is an older gentleman out snow blowing his driveway. And I thought, no, 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 no. So I got out, got my head out of the garage and went and finished his driveway for him. Hmm. And he, I got all done and he goes, now how much do I owe you? I said, oh, you don't owe me anything. I said, I just did it because I love you and God loves you. And I just wanted to tell you that. I got my snowblower and went home. <laughs> and and he every, I see him up at the post office a couple times a week and he always says to me, you know, I've lived in that house a long time and there's been a lot of people that li have lived in your house and none of them have come and snow blowed my driveway. Wow. So something wow. simple like that that yeah. you can do, a little act of kindness, even in your workplace or around your house, you know, you can, you can show people Jesus that way. Excellent. Another question that uh, we have here. A friend, of mine is, a friend of mine recently told me she talks to God like a friend. Mm -hmm. I don't understand how to do this. I pray before meals and I pray with my children at bedtime, but I don't understand the notion of talking to God the way I talk to my friends. That's the statement in this letter. How about that? Some people struggle with that. You know, yeah, they, obviously she does. They look, at, they look at prayer in Matthew chapter five. You know, it, 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 when Jesus teaches the disciples to pray, he gives them a a blueprint. This is how you should pray. And people, mm -hmm. they look at the scripture and they go, this is how I should pray. So if it doesn't fit this mold that they've put in scripture, then I'm not praying the right way. And I say to them, have you had a conversation? Just talk to them like you're talking to me. You know, some of, some of the best prayers I've ever had are in my car driving yeah. places. Same here, same here. You know, <laughs> um, whether I'm just talk, kind of going through my week with God, you know, hey, I, I need some help with this or you know, being angry with God, and, and I've driven down the road yelling at God about stuff. Just having that conversation because we are friends with God. Every Christian is a, is a friend of God, and, and, and we need to talk to him like a friend. You know, we get mad at our friends, you know, we yell at our friends. We get mad at God, we can yell at God, and he can take it. And, and, and I think if we get out of, if we break that mold of this is how we should pray, then it opens up a whole new avenue to the way we do pray. Very good. You, you want I to also answer? pray in the car quite frequently. Um, sometimes if it's uh, on the way to uh, the hospital because someone uh, was in an accident or something, you know, my prayer <laughs> is focused in one particular way. Other times if I'm on my way someplace, um, it may be more of a, a general conversation that I have, um, but one in which He's in the car with me, um, and it will be verbal. It will sometimes not be, but I mean, I'll, I'll speak just as if he's sitting in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm just always having a conversation with God, and I imagine that I am just speaking to him, and there is nobody else around. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just is, it draws me closer to me, to him, and it just brings great comfort. Yeah. And sometimes I do yell at God. Sometimes I get upset. The other week, our secretary was out with the flu, so I was kind of manning the office, and anything that could go wrong seemed to be going wrong. So I was expressing my displeasure <laughs> with God, just like I do with people sometimes. And it was OK, yeah. because he provided opportunities for me to get refocused, calm down, and feel that sense of peace again mm -hmm. uh, by making everything eventually work out. Very good, very good. One last question here we have time for with about two minutes. And both of these, these are two questions actually, I'm combining into one. They are both asking for information about how to have your own personal effective Bible study to increase knowledge and the like. And um, 
this one person says that that read the Bible in a year doesn't work for them because they always feel that there's too much to read in one day and it, they end up failing with it. How can you study the Bible effectively, personal Bible study, in a way that's effective? Well, one of the things I've <clears throat> discovered is, is uh, sometimes I read a passage and then I read it over and then I read it over mm -hmm. and I read it over. Mm -hmm. um, one time someone challenged me, take the book of Philippians and read it every day for a month. It's four chapters you can read in about 20 minutes. And it was amazing to me the different things I saw. Hmm. You know, on, on day 29, you're going, I don't remember reading that before. Yeah. But it was there. It was just what God was bringing out. And so uh. there are a variety of, of ways. I think one of the struggles a lot of people have these days, uh, or some people have, is they're not very good readers. And they feel pressed into reading the scriptures, and, and they're not good at it, and it, it doesn't work for them. And I always, it, it's available to listen to. Listen, it's a free app these days. Listen to it. Don't, don't you know, feel like you have to do it like everybody else. In their defense, quickly, there are yeah. a lot of hard names in the Bible for people to pronounce. <laughs> so, um, you know, for me, uh, what I do uh, is Proverbs. Very quickly, uh -huh. Proverbs, you know, there's a, ver there's a chapter a chapter over, a day. A chapter a day okay. for a month. So. Well, I have to leave it at that. <laughs> well, a lot of time. Thank you very much. It's been most enlightening to hear what you have to say, and I'm sure that our viewers really appreciate the time and the research that you've taken to be here. That's our program for today. We'll be back again next week. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We are able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.